Whether you're just getting started in investing or you already have a diversified portfolio in place, whether you manage your investments on your own or you're working with an advisor, there is a lot of noise in our world. And that can make it really tough when it comes to what you should be and should not be concentrating on as an investor. The stock market has its ups and downs, which can create a lot of emotions when investing our hard earned money. So covered in this area or covered in this video is noise, thoughts, and information that you should ignore to help keep you on track towards being a successful investor. I'm Scott with Siren's Financial Group, where we partner with clients to help answer and bring solutions to their key questions. Are you on track for retirement? What can you do to improve your financial picture? And how can you help reduce your overall tax situation? When putting our hard-earned money to work, nobody likes to see the value go down nor do we like that feeling that maybe we've missed out on something big. So when making the move to invest for your long-term financial or retirement plan, here are five areas that you want to ignore to help keep your plan on track and your goals in sight. Number one, ignore or avoid hindsight. Do you know how many times I've heard people say, I wish I would have invested in Facebook or Google or Microsoft or Tesla or fill in the blank with another name of a, another fund or a stock or people that have said, I could have made thousands if I would have invested in, again, fill in the blank with any stock or fund that, that was hot at the time. Um, or another thing that I've heard people say is I should have put more into and could have been their 401k or their IRA or their Roth or their brokerage account. You know, I've seen where these would haves and could haves and these should haves can really consume a person's focus. And as we all know, hindsight is 2020. So don't let these these hindsights keep you on the sidelines. So whether you've been investing for a long time or whether you're looking to get started, don't let the past alter what could be a great future. Number two, ignore the news. Being an investor and following the news can be an emotional roller coaster. One day you might hear on the news that everything in the economy is great and we're looking at a bull market for a really long time. And then the next day they might say, oh, look what happened in the economic in the economy last night. And now we're predicting a bear market. So whether it be the news on TV, radio or on your phone, remember their job is to get your attention, keep your attention that way they can advertise to you. Too much news can really tug on our emotional strings and could potentially lead to some bad decisions. So next time you get caught up in the news and you're make, maybe thinking about making a change to your investments or to your long-term strategy, take a second and really think about that news piece that you're listening to and understand, was it just there to grab your attention or was it really trying to educate you? And then take and talk this over with your advisor before making any sort of knee-jerk reactions to your investments or to your long-term strategy. Number three, ignore people's stories of big winnings. People love to brag when they do good, especially when they made the right stock pick or fund pick and made a bunch of money. And then you might start to feel like, well, you missed out on something and then you should hurry up and try whatever that whatever they did. Just remember, most people are telling you about their big winnings, but they rarely tell you about their losses. And if they truly had all of the answers, wouldn't they be doing this for a full time job? And for those that are, some may share with you all of the risk and rewards that are involved, but sometimes people just short share with you only the rewards that are that are involved and, and tend to leave out the risk. So this isn't to scare you away from investing or making some stock picks on your own. However, what I'm suggesting is learn from other people's stories, but then do your homework to understand all of the potential risk and rewards involved before changing your investment strategy selling any of your investments or making that decision to add in new investments to your overall strategy. 
Number four, don't try to time when to get in and when to get out of the market. You know, I've heard a lot of stories from people that said, oh, I sold right before the crash. But in most of these stories, the storyteller conveniently leaves out when they got back into the market is most likely um, they're not really sure how much they might have missed out on in gains when the market rebounded. Or maybe the storyteller actually still has their money still on the sidelines sitting in cash and the market's rebounded past the point where they sold. So in trying to time the market, you've got to make two right bets. You have to continuously make the right bet of when to sell and get out of the market. And then also making that right bet of when the market's now at its low and when to get back in. And it's basically impossible to continuously make these two right bets. I'll share a quick story with you that was written up in Investopedia in regards to a bet that Warren Buffett made with some hedge fund managers. So in 2008, Warren Buffett made a bet with um, a hedge fund manager that the S&P 500 index would outperform a portfolio of hedge funds uh, over 10 years. Now, this bet was actually made right before the 2008 crash. So the bet was made and then the market crashed. But in 2017, so prior to the end of the 10 years, right, 2017, the hedge fund manager actually conceded because their strategy of making active picks, trying to time the market, had underperformed the S&P 500, and they didn't see themselves uh, being able to surpass those return, catch up and surpass those returns by the end of the 10-year time period. So again, showing that that passive um, investing strategy had outperformed somebody trying to time the markets. Now, this doesn't mean that you should be in a passive strategy or an inactive strategy. You have to be in a strategy that's fitting for you, for your time horizon, and for your risk tolerance. There's another article in Barron's that only 29% of active U.S. stock fund managers beat their benchmark in 2019. So I'll leave you with this in regards to this point is that it is time in the market, not timing the market that helps produce long-term returns. I hope you're finding this video to be of value and benefit. And if so, and you'd like to see additional videos just like this to help you build wealth and reduce your long-term tax burden, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and connect with us on lifemoneyshow.com. Again, that's lifemoneyshow.com as we continuously come out with new videos, podcasts, and other information, again, to help you and your financial future. All right, let's talk about number five. Don't get caught up in short-term performance numbers, whether it be one day, one month, or one year when reviewing new investments or looking at your current holdings, there are going to be good days and bad days and good years and bad years. And in my opinion, for most investors, a long-term focus and long-term results are what really matter. Now, does that mean that you shouldn't be tracking your investments and making sure that they're tracking the appropriate uh, indexes? Of course, you want to take a look at those, those types of things. But what I'm saying is you don't want to make any sort of knee-jerk buy and sell reactions based on short-term performance as that could really impact what your long-term results could be. So let me just give you an example here. Like if we were to take a look at the S&P 500 index and the swings in that index, meaning the ups and downs that a person could see in one year. Now, of course, past performance is not indicative of, of future results, but let's just take a look. For example, in 2017, there was an intra-year drawdown. That means from peak to the low, to from high to low within that year. In 2017, there was an intra-year decline of 3%, but the index that year actually finished up 22%. Let's take a look at 2020. What a great example when the world was impacted by COVID. We saw an intra-year, again, decline, high to low, of 32%.
I'm sorry, of 34%. But the index in 2020 actually finished up 18% by the end of the year. So it's important to keep this in mind um, when seeing the day-to-day -day and year-to-year -year ups and downs of your investments and your portfolio. Again, focusing on that long-term can help you towards becoming and, and continuing to be a successful investor. The other thing is, is, is being aware of what the one-year performance numbers um, look like. So think about this, after a crash, so after um, an investment hits its low and then begins to rebound, if you're looking at performance numbers from the point of that crash on, those performance numbers could be a little bit misleading um, short term. So again, that's why I say is don't get caught up in those short term performance numbers. Really be focused on the long term and long term results. As human beings, we are emotional creatures, which can make these areas sometimes really hard to ignore. And that's why a lot of clients partner with us to help them manage their investments and keep them on track towards long term success. Having a sound strategy and a long-term focus can really help you towards long-term success as an investor. Now, if you're not sure what strategy to use or if you're unable to manage your emotions, I really recommend that you partner with someone to help guide you along your journey. Again, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found it to be of value and benefit. And if so, subscribe to our YouTube channel or connect with us again on lifemoneyshow.com, lifemoneyshow.com, where we're continuously coming out with additional information, videos, and podcasts to help you and your financial future. Thanks, and have a great day.